Let's be real. If you had to name the most badass action movie of the past few years, what's the first flick that comes to mind? Yeah, yeah, John Wick might be all the rage for teens, Liam Neeson continues to do his geriatric Charles Bronson, and you never can discount Jason Statham and his brand of brutal butt kicking. But come on, as far as violently visceral and scintillatingly satisfying underdog tales loaded with realistic fisticuffs and gore-sodden gunfights, nobody does it better than nobody. Indeed, the 2021 Cinematic Blitzkrieg starring Bob Odenkirk as an unassuming everyman by day and certified ass kicker by night hit all the right notes to deliver a vicious and delicious revenge dish for the ages. With that being said, did you know that a Nobody sequel is currently back in the works? Did you know that there were discussions about making a Nobody and John Wick crossover? Hell, were you even aware that the entire plot of the movie was inspired by a real-life home invasion experienced by Bob Odenkirk himself? Well, we're about to dig up all the buried bodies and hidden skeletons in nobody's past and give y'all a heaping dose of what the f*** happened to this movie. Now, give us the goddamn kitty cat bracelet, mother f It's time to get on with the show. As alluded to, nobody was inspired by an idea by Bob Odenkirk after the actor experienced not one, but two terrifying home invasions in real life. One of the break-ins was particularly traumatic for Odenkirk and his family, with the actor publicly recounting the time that burglars stormed into his LA home. After bravely trapping the invaders in his basement, Odenkirk called the police to respond to the crime. However, Odenkirk was so discouraged and dissatisfied with the police response that he imagined what would have transpired if he had taken swift, vigilant justice into his own hands and pulled a full-on Steven Seagal in the heat of the moment. As Odenkirk continued to envision how things might have played out if he was a badass, the idea bloomed into a cinematic story. For Odenkirk, the motivation for the story was meant to explore how you always wish you'd done more to protect one's family in such a harrowing scenario. Apart from the home invasions his family suffered, Odenkirk was also interested in exploring his own internal struggles with aging and feeling irrelevant and ineffectual as his children matured. Once Odenkirk's concept was approved and his casting of Hutch Manziel was announced, nobody began development in January of 2018. John Wick writer Derek Kolstad received the story and penned the subsequent screenplay for Nobody, with John Wick director David Leach producing for STX Entertainment. Around the same time in 2018, Russian director Ilya Nyshuler was tapped to direct Nobody on the strength of his breathless action movie Hardcore Henry. By 2019, Nobody swapped distributors over to Universal. Christopher Lloyd and Connie Nielsen were cast in the fall of 2019 to play Hutch's father David and wife Becca, respectively. It was Odenkirk's idea to cast Lloyd as his father. The director immediately loved the idea and described why he thought the decision worked so well, saying someone with positive baggage wielding a shotgun and killing people is going to be more fun to see than someone we've seen do it. To his credit, Lloyd almost declined the role due to having irritable bowel syndrome. Oh my God. He shit everywhere. He shit everywhere! Look what he did, he shit all over the wall! Yet, like a real trooper, Lloyd declined to use stunt doubles for the action scenes and insisted on toting the heavy shotguns on his own. Never mind the IBS, the irony of Doc Brown dumping 1.21 gigawatts of lead on a gang of Russian mobsters only adds to the actor's towering legend. Believe it or not, Odenkirk and Lloyd share the same birthday, October 22nd and celebrated together when they both turned one year older while making the movie. Following the casting process, 
The director was pleasantly surprised that Kolstad was not too precious with his screenplay, telling him that the best idea wins, should changes be required. After polishing the script and showing it to his Russian mobster friend, who in turn showed the script to associates in the Alpshak, the Russian Mafia, Nyshuller was delighted to hear how authentic and realistic the story actually was. We'll delve into the efforts taken to make the movie as gritty and hyper-realistic as possible in a short bit. First though, it's worth noting that principal photography on Nobody began on September 30th, 2019 and lasted until November 3rd of that year. The whole movie was shot in just 34 days, which is quite a remarkable achievement given the excellent final result. Although filming commenced in LA for establishing shots, almost all of the movie was shot in Winnipeg, Canada. For instance, Hutch's home was filmed at 20 Shillington Road in Winnipeg. Meanwhile, the unforgettable bus brawl was filmed on 171 Princess Street. Speaking of the brutal bus battle, fans need to know that Odenkirk performed all of the fights and stunts himself. There's this thing I gotta do. Then you best go do it. At the age of 56 and 57, to prepare for such a physically taxing performance, Odenkirk trained for two years before cameras even rolled. At the height of his training regiment, a famous unnamed actor whom Odenkirk respects greatly asked him why he was so committed to training when the studio could just provide people to do the fighting for him. Odenkirk stands by his decision and has publicly stated, I had so much fun doing the fight scenes. It was Odenkirk's idea to bash his head against the rail pole inside the bus too. According to Odenkirk in the DVD commentary, the idea was meant to reinforce Hutch's status as an everyman rather than an infallible action hero. Odenkirk also trained under Swiss actor and fight coordinator Daniel Bernhardt, who plays one of the goons Hutch battles on the bus and knocks his teeth out. Meanwhile, the preamble on the bus fight was originally meant to utilize the song Ave Maria, suggesting that the Russian thugs were sent to Hutch as a gift from God to soothe his embattled soul. In the end, Steve Lawrence's version of I Gotta Be Me was chosen to start the scene. To backtrack just a little bit, nobody was initially meant to open with the harrowing home invasion Hutch and his family encounter. However, to establish the mundane routine of Hutch's daily suburban life, the opening montage of Hutch's repetitive domestic cycle was added. Shortly following the home invasion that incites the plot of the movie, Hutch visits a tattoo parlor to find the assailants. The memorable scene features Hutch revealing his perilous past through a tattoo on his wrist. The tattoo resembles a pair of playing cards with the seven of spades and two of diamonds. First of all, the number 72 is a numeric code for US Green Berets, a branch of Marines that Hutch belonged to in the past. Furthermore, in tarot readings, spades are associated with bad luck, death, and violence. Meanwhile, diamonds represent jewels, coins, and money. Therefore, in addition to indicating his past with the Green Berets, Hutch's tattoo signifies that he has dealt with death, violence, and hard luck directly for money and riches in his life. Speaking of Hutch's mysterious past, the character turns out to be revealed as an auditor and government assassin for the various three-letter agencies. Hints to Hutch's true nature are given throughout the movie. For example, the Russian pop song that the main villain sings in the dance club is titled Bulgotter, and Bulgotter translates as accountant, which alludes to Hutch's role in the film as an intelligence community auditor. Another awesome moment in the movie comes when Hutch is joined by his dad, David, and his former colleague, Harry, played by Wu-Tang Clan's RZA. According to Nashuller, RZA only had four days, including rehearsal, to complete his role. However, because he's seen more action movies than the director has, something the director admitted is quite rare, RZA was able to slip right into the violent shootout without missing a single beat. Meanwhile, during the intense shootout at David's retirement home, Nashuller makes a cameo appearance as a Russian goon sent to kill Hutch's father. 
Indeed, much of Nobody's appeal comes from its hyper-realistic violence and palpably painful action scenes. According to Nyshuler and Kolstad, this was not an accident. The firearm safety coordinator for the movie, Dave Brown, instructs real-life police officers and military soldiers on how to shoot targets with pinpoint accuracy. Brown worked closely with Odenkirk, and the two spent extensive time together discussing the physical and psychological toll such shootouts would have on the human body and mind. Part of turning Hutch from an ordinary suburban dad to a merciless killer was to depict the mental and physical agony the character endures throughout the movie. For instance, when the human body suffers enough physical punishment, the perception of time appears to slow down, an effect called tachypsychia. Hutch also experiences a narrow sense of tunnel vision after taking his physical beatings, all of which were deliberate effects used in the movie to underscore Hutch's realistic sense of pain and discomfort. It's precisely Hutch's vulnerabilities that make him easy to relate to and root for, and also sets him apart from most most indestructible action heroes. Considering Odenkirk's demanding performance and the rapid 34-day filming schedule for Nobody, it's a minor miracle that production went so smoothly, without any major injuries or mishaps. According to the commentary, the biggest issues that arose on set related to whether Parmesan cheese should be layered on top of the lasagna during a dinner scene. Connie Nielsen reportedly did not care for the topping and the minor argument broke out on set. Beyond that, nobody was reportedly made with very few hiccups. Yet, for as smoothly as the principal photography went, nothing could have prepared the Nobody team for the delayed release caused by the sudden outbreak of COVID-19. Before the pandemic resulted in a global lockdown, Nobody was scheduled to hit theaters on August 14th, 2020. Hello! Once the outbreak of COVID-19 took place, the release of Nobody was delayed and rescheduled several times. Hello! Once the safety precautions were lifted, Nobody was eventually released in theaters on March 26, 2021, eight months after its initial release date. Fortunately, the movie came out when the masses were desperate to return to cinemas, and the movie became a financial success by turning a $16 million budget into a $57.5 million moneymaker worldwide. Coupled with the critical plaudits, the commercial success of Nobody led the producers to consider a sequel of some kind. When nobody bombarded theaters in March 2021, Connie Nielsen expressed her interest in returning for a sequel, declaring that she only took on the hapless role of Hutch's wife so she could be part of a popular cinematic franchise. By June 2021, Derek Kolstad began writing a script for Nobody 2, although the movie was not officially greenlit at the time. At the time, one of the ideas was to potentially make a Nobody and John Wick crossover movie. Remember, Leach and Kolstad were responsible for creating the John Wick franchise, and Nobody already has connections to the popular action series. First of all, 87 North Productions produced both Nobody and the John Wick series. Secondly, a promotional poster for Nobody is very reminiscent of one of the posters for John Wick 2 with the guns aimed at Wick's face replaced by fists pointed at Hutch's head. The first trailer for Nobody also billed the movie as an intense action flick from the makers of John Wick. Also, in Nobody, Hutch discharges an empty magazine clip from his rifle in a way that is identical to the way John Wick does it in the second movie. Furthermore, the song The Impossible Dream by The Quest heard in Nobody was also in the trailer for John Wick 3. Although the potential for a Nobody and John Wick crossover appears to have been laid, Kolstad claimed that if it does materialize, 
He would like to see small, subtle connections made between the two action franchises rather than a full-fledged mashup. Kolstad also stated that the crossover would be minimal and that Hutch and Wick would be allies if they shared any screen time at all. However, since Nobody and John Wick are distributed by different studios, it will be quite difficult to combine the two franchises in the future. When speaking about the potential crossover, Nyshuler maintained hope and kept the door open, stating, I mean, everything's possible. Stranger Things have definitely happened, but we could get a Nobody sequel. In March 2022, one of the production companies behind the film, 87 North Productions, expressed interest in Nobody 2. However, no official production date was given. The project lingered for a few more months until David Leach announced in August of that year that the studio was committed to producing a sequel. By December 2022, it was announced that a sequel to Nobody was officially in production with a shooting schedule slated for the next year. Most recently, in January 2024, Nielsen confirmed that the sequel is currently in development and that her character will return, alongside Bob Odenkirk, of course. With not much else to cover, that's essentially what the f*** happened to nobody. The story was inspired by Odenkirk's real-life encounters with home invaders and became a kind of wish-fulfillment fantasy for the actor to live out on screen what he couldn't do in reality. Once the concept was greenlit, the creative forces behind the John Wick franchise propped the film up as a sick cinematic sidekick to the Keanu Reeves vehicle and launched Odenkirk's newfangled career as an action star. Although the film shoot experienced very little drama during a rapid 34-day shoot, the movie's release was delayed several times due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Fortunately, by the time nobody stormed at theaters in March 2021, moviegoers were ready to flood the cinemas and the film became a commercial and critical hit. As a result, a potential Nobody and John Wick crossover was flirted with, but it ultimately led to the announcement that a standalone Nobody sequel is currently on the slate. For action movie fans, there's no better news than hearing that Odenkirk will bring Hutch Manziel back to the big screen sometime in the future.